Well, the CDC has as one of its seminal missions infectious disease surveillance globally and nationally. And they're the only entity in the U.S. that tracks these things nationally. So now you've got a week, two weeks, who knows how long, where there's no one really responsible for watching what's happening nationally. What kinds of diseases are we looking at? We're starting influenza season. There are measles and rubella outbreaks occurring in the world. Polio, enterovirus 771, the uh, coronavirus that we've seen out of the Middle East, avian influenza. There's an endless number of infectious disease threats that, as we often say, are an airplane right away from us. Who's going to monitor that over this time period? The state public health departments can look at what's happening in their state if they have the resources, but nobody can piece together what's happening across states, across countries, and develop a comprehensive collage of what the threat might be for the American citizen. Right, I mean, that's really a critical function of CDC. Think of it as pixels of a picture. They get one pixel in one state with an infection, another pixel in a neighboring state. Those two states don't necessarily share any information, but they report into CDC at the national level who begins to put these pieces together. And pretty soon, 15 of these pixels produces a picture that they can understand. The issue is this happens in real time. Think back to 2009 in February when we were beginning to get the sense of a pandemic virus arising out of Mexico. Well, there were some unusual respiratory diseases in Mexico. CDC is aware of it. WHO is aware of it, then spotty cases occurring in the southwest, and then a bunch of cases in the northeast part of the United States. Who put that together into understanding, wait a minute, we've got a transmissible infectious disease, it's respiratory in origin, looks and acts like influenza, they receive the virus, sequence it, and voila, we understood that we had an influenza pandemic on our hands. All of that inside of a couple of weeks. So that's how fast these things can move and why you need somebody really doing that real-time surveillance. You know, what CDC does is they have mechanisms to incorporate data from all of the states simultaneously. They have personnel that can actually go into the states and do outbreak investigation. They have personnel who are authorized to go outside the continental U.S and look at outbreak investigations and piece all that information together. No state has that capability or authority. They have what's called a Global Disease Detection Operations Center. This is a 24-7 operation manned by CDC personnel who monitor about 40 to 50 infectious disease threats. So there are very limited staff available to do that and they don't have staff at the current time with the governmental shutdown to go out and do outbreak investigation, to do this kind of surveillance, and certainly not at the international level. So we're kind of stranded right now. Yeah, worst case scenario is a novel infectious disease is imported into the U.S. There are spotty cases across a dozen states. Nobody understands that it's happening simultaneously in real time. And we don't have 12 cases, we have 1,200 cases before we realize what's going on. It means what we don't have, whether it be for influenza or any infectious disease, we do not have a key ingredient with which to protect ourselves, and that's situational awareness.